You're trapped. Things have gone south. It won't end well. You can't keep us here, man. You gotta let us go. We're not keeping you. You're just staying. Shoot who is left. Blood and blade. Get ready to run. Here we go. Gentlemen, the makers of The Green Room, an excellent film in which Sir Patrick Stewart has awesome facial hair and schemes uh, to commit terrible crimes while being foiled by young, cool kids. Why did you want to remake Masterminds? I have not seen Masterminds. <laughs> this gentleman's seen Masterminds. What is Masterminds? Tell me. Um, I was a co-creator, producer, and lead actor on this movie. And my colleague and I, when we, when we, uh, we got, a, got it financed and ready to go, we thought we were making the next Home Alone. And, and that we were going to be rich as creases for the rest of our lives. <laughs> it lasted a weekend. <laughs> it opened on Friday, and I went to see it on a Sunday night somewhere over in the valley, and there was nobody there. So it was a fun that's film. what he means. It's a fun film. Yeah. He gets to chase Brenda Fricker in a go-kart. It was really cool. Yeah. yeah. It's cool. Well, I'll, I'll check it out. <laughs> this is the R-rated version of that, and it's a okay. very disturbing film, and congratulations on that. What, what, what was the sort of the mindset going into this film? Because this film, I feel, handles violence very differently than a lot of other films. It feels more gross in a way. Gross would be a word, yes. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more impact. I think it feels real. I think it feels like a weight. I think the way we treated it was, you know, we were making an escapist entertainment piece of cinema here, but there's a reverence for all the lives that are lost. There is a pragmatism to the violence, and it's not so much, like, there is no sadistic bloodlust being satisfied here, um, and I think it's actually a responsibility to show the emotional impact of the violence. And sometimes that means full frontal makeup shows to really rub your face in it. When a character is transitioning from an innocent punk rock band member into a killer, you're right there with them transitioning and it's not always gonna go down too easy. Does that serious approach preclude sequels like Green Room 2, The Viper Room, where Anton has to fight off a giant viper? You know, viper room? funny enough, this is like Anton's home turf. It is. I've played a few Sunday at midnight shows at the Viper Room to about five or six people. <laughs> did, they, did those five or six people have a good time? The, I think so. I would like to think so. I don't know. They may have just been here for the cheap drinks. I don't know. Yeah. Were you, when you were here, uh, did you think about this place as sort of a battleground? Like, I don't know if like an evil Kate Mulgrew was trying to break in and kill y'all. Like, what would you do in this particular setting at the Viper Room? I, this is my first time here, actually. So, so you didn't survey the surroundings, check your corners? I'm, I'm New York. I'm not L.A. So also, we needed to be far more secluded than the Viper Room. Careful now. This will be over soon, gentlemen.